Hey everybody, it's Peggy. I'm back again with another video and today we are talking about red flag buyers and sometimes I say krakens because I don't like calling the other word. That's not fair. I know a lot of people named Karen and they're all lovely people. Anyway, so the first, of, so basically this is avoiding problems before they start and this is spotting the red flags and I will say that most of the time we have no problem spotting the red flags. We have no problem spotting the buyer who's a walking, talking, one-star review in an open case. Um, we have no problem figuring out who's the person who is going to make our day miserable just because they can. We don't usually have a lot of issues sorting out who those people are. Especially, especially if you are dealing with a product that you have to communicate with the customer first. If you, if you are doing something like, okay, say it's a custom product and your customer has to message you with the name that they want put on it or whatever, right? And they're like, hi, this is what I want and it better be right or I'm going to open a case and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Nah, 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 nah. And you better make sure you're doing things right. If, they're, if, they're a if they are launching on you from the get-go, I'm very sorry I can't fill your order. I have already gone ahead and processed your refund and I'm sure you'll have no problem finding another seller who is willing, to, who is able to, more meet, to, to better meet your needs. That's what I usually say. And I've only had to say it once in over four years. Um, I will say there is, that is, that is one of the most invaluable things you can get from finding out who your preferred buyers are, where they hang out, and then going and finding them and bringing them to you. But if you have to communicate with your customer as part of sorting out what they want, like maybe you offer something in multiple colors and they have to tell you what they want or they have to communicate with you or they've just proactively, they've just proactively communicated with you, then yeah, if they're dicks, if they're like, hey, I, I just placed my order with you and I'm just wondering when the update is and when this is and when, like, if they're super, there's people that are curious and that's okay. And then there's people that are super needy in this vaguely menacing kind of way. I've had both. Not, oh, actually, I haven't had both. Not, okay, I've had both in other environments. I've only, I've only ever had the, I've had super curious people on Etsy, and I love that. I think that's awesome. But anyway, so somebody is communicating with you in ways that are, they start hinting at low reviews. They start hinting at, you know, oh, I hope I, hope I really like this. I'd hate to have to return it and you've got a no returns policy, cancel the order immediately. That's your first hint that there's gonna be a fucking problem. And if you agree to something, oh, I'm sure everything will be fine and blah, 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 blah. I mean, I don't think a return's going to be necessary. And then they come back and say, I wanna return it. And then they, you know, I, no, I have policies. It's like, well, you said that you hoped it wouldn't be necessary. So that obviously implies that you do do returns. So I want my money back. People that are trying to loophole you into, people that are trying to loophole you or set you up so that the things don't go right for them immediately, they can get back at you immediately. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of examples. Well, actually I do have, I do have a whole lot of examples because usually what happens is for some reason there's been a communicate, the reason, the when this goes south is for some reason there's been a communication between you and your buyer before the item is completed, finished, put in the mail, whatever. That's when you're, that's, that's, that is, that is your opportunity to do something about it before it happens. And my advice is that if you're looking at somebody going, this person is a walking red flag and I'm pretty sure, oh, this person's been nothing but mean and demanding and they're calling me names and they're doing this and they're doing that. It's like cancel the order immediately. And I don't care what they want and I don't care what it's worth to you because your first prior, your first priority as a seller, not first, obviously your first priority as a seller is good customer service and all kinds of other things, but you want to be in business tomorrow. You don't want this person, you, you want to be in business tomorrow and you want to be sane tomorrow. You want to be mentally healthy tomorrow. You do not want to deal with these. I don't know how to describe it. I do not. Know how, I see this all the time. There was this one, this is, this is the one that got completely out of hand. There was this one woman, she came into the group, she made custom teddy bears. I'm not even sure, I forget what group. I don't know whether it was my group or a different group. It was a while ago. Um, she came into the group, she made custom teddy bears. So this person had to, she had to communicate with the buyer before proceeding with the work, okay? This person was weird from day one. And I don't mean weird, People, everybody's weird. I'm fucking weird. We're all weird in our own special way. This person wanted to confirm every single thing. 
What color thread you're using? Show me pictures. What color, what color are you using for this? What color are you using it? Show me pictures. Well, I know you said this is black, but is it true black or is it off black? I don't know. Show me pictures. What kind of stuffing are you using? She was really, really freaking demanding. Lots and lots of questions. And she was rude about it. She wasn't just super excited and curious. She was rude. It's like, well, this better be the right one because I'd hate to have a problem with this. I mean, blah, 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 blah. She was already threatening, threatening a one-star review, basically. Um, and this was hundreds of messages that they'd already exchanged back and forth. And this woman hadn't sewn anything yet, hadn't started with any of it. And I'm not, I don't, I don't know anything about making homemade teddy bears. I think that was a teddy bear. I forget what she was making, to be honest. It was some sort of a stuffed thing. Maybe it was a stuffed baby doll, a stuffed teddy bear, stuffed elephant. I don't know what she was making, but it was home, it was handmade from scratch. Okay. Then this woman, so this is, so then, so this, this, this seller has been putting up with this for days. Days and days and days and days and days. She has already put so much time into dealing with this woman that she could have made somebody else an actual teddy bear and gotten it out the door. That's how much time this woman had wasted over details and wanting pictures and wanting this and wanting that. It doesn't sound like a lot, but like if somebody contacts me and says, I want a certain fabric, do you happen to have it? Um, and I, I'll usually show them a picture, right? Now, that does take time. You have to... What do they want? What kind of theme are they looking for? Then you have to go through your stash. Then you have to start pulling out the stuff that they want, the stuff that matches sort of kind of what they're asking about. Then you have to take a picture. Then you have to go over there and you have to load the picture up onto your computer. Then you have to respond to them and link the picture. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it can be a lot, especially if they want more than one things and especially if there's more than one person asking. So yeah, I get it. It can be time consuming. Okay. I get how that part works, but this woman was already freaking out. She was being rude. She was being demanding like really demanding. And then she started asking about the videos. Hey, I'm just checking in. I'm just checking in on your progress. I haven't, you haven't linked me to the video yet. And this is when the seller decides to get upset. It's like in my book, the seller should have canceled this order by about the fifth message because it was very, very crowded. She, she screenshotted a bunch of stuff. A lot of people, when they come into social media groups asking for how do I handle this, will share social media exchanges. Um, just so that the, just so that anybody who's helping can get a uh, a better idea of what they're of what they're helping with, right? And this woman was was this woman had a problem from the get go, and she wasn't just curious; she was mean about it. So it's like, why haven't you already canceled the order? Well, I, I need the money, and I'm all about good customer service, don't you know? She thought she was doing good customer service by putting up with this. And it's like, sure, you're doing good customer service by putting up with this, but what you're doing is you're taking somebody who is angry needy, demanding, has already threatened you with a one-star review over and over and over and over and over again, and an open case. If I don't like it, I'm going to return this. So blah, blah, blah. You better make sure you... I'm just being really demanding because if you don't get this right, I'm going to be returning this whether you whether you think I deserve it or not or whatever the fuck. I forget how she said it. But it's like she'd already made it very, very clear that if this bear didn't turn out exactly that she was going to be returning it for a full refund and opening a case if she didn't get the full refund, blah, 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 right? So it's like, okay, this woman has been threatening you from the beginning, rude from the beginning, extreme, not just, okay, a little bit of time consuming is good customer service. That's nothing wrong with that, but this was to an extreme. And then she started demanding, like I said, she started demanding the videos. I can't give you a five-star review if I haven't seen your process. I can't accept this bear if I don't, you know, this is important to me that I see every step of its construction and if you can't do that for me, then I'm, then I'm going, then, then I can almost guarantee you I'll be returning it. And she's in a panic. Like, what do I do? What do I do? And it's like, everybody's going, why haven't you already canceled this order? I need the money. Okay, so this is a sunk cost fallacy is that I've already put so much time and I've already put so much of my time and energy into getting this far that I need to see it through. She had put so much time and energy into getting as far as she already had that she could have engaged with another customer and done another bear and gotten paid fairly for it and been on her way to the next customer if she had just simply said enough is enough with this one. And everybody was like, you need to cancel the order. Oh, that's not good customer service. So don't be a red flag seller that will just take anything. Because there's, there's, there's being a red flag and then there's like being a red flag in front of a bull. Don't be the red flag in front of the bull. Okay, anyway, anyway. So the gist of, the whole gist here you can cancel an order at any time. You don't need, you, you can't discriminate. You cannot behave in, in um, discriminatory behavior. You can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm refusing to do business with you because you're gay. 
I'm gay. I can say it, right? Um, you can't just, I don't do business with gay people. You can't do that. Now, if you have a legitimate reason to cancel the sale and I happen to be gay, too, too bad, so sad. But you don't have to provide a reason. I am sorry I am unable to complete your order. Your refund is on the way. I am sure you will ha not have any problems finding another seller to meet your needs. You're done, you walk away. So, walking away from these red flag buyers, the biggest reason why people stick around and continue to take it is because they want to get paid. They have, and again, a lot of these, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know if I've said it on this video or if I've said it on a previous one. I'm a little confused today, bear with me. Okay, so people, you know, college students that are trying to make a few extra bucks because every cent they have is going to tuition and housing fees or whatever else they've got going on. I get it, I get it, you need the money. You need the money. You, you, you know, it's, you're, you're down to your last $4 and this money can get you through the rest of the week. I get it. Walk away anyway. Because what happens if this person turns into the kind of nightmare that causes you the kind of problems that gets you shut down? Or that gets you so fucking miserable and upset that you shut down, that you decide to shut down. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> shut down. Don't risk your future income because of this fucking idiot. Don't risk your fucking mental health for this idiot. People stop doing Etsy because they stop having a good time. I mean, you're not, not every day is going to be a great day. That's fine. That's just the nature of business. But I'm talking about, do you think, do you think this person doesn't have three friends just like her? That's not the person you want to impress. If, I, if you impress me, and I'm pretty easygoing, I am pretty easy going. If you impress me, I'm going to tell two friends and they're going to tell two friends and so on and so on, just like the shampoo commercial. If I am a dick to you and get away with it and get a refund or get a discount or get all kinds of other shit from you because I'm an asshole and I treated you like garbage and it paid off, I'm going to tell two friends who are just like me, right? You do not want to impress. You want the assholes of the world to not be impressed with you. You want them to leave. You want them out the door. You don't want them to come back and you don't want them to bring friends. Because I've also seen this. Oh, my friend so-and-so got a 10% discount. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know why I'm paying full price. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. You know, my friend so-and-so. Like, I mean, I'd hate for both of us to have to come back and give you a low review. Blah, 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 blah. This shit happens. People are fucking weird, right? So you do not want to waste... I don't want to say waste. Yes, if you have a customized, if you have a product that's customizable in some way, you will probably have to communicate with your buyer before proceeding. And if in the process of communicating, you figure out that they are a dick who is going to be miserable to you, then you need to leave. Walk away. I am sorry. It turns out I'm unable. Just say, I'm sorry. It turns out I'm unable to complete your order. Your refund is on the way. I'm sure there will be another Etsy out seller out there who will be able to help you meet, help you get what you need. You're done. You are done. Write that. If you haven't written that down, rewind by 30 seconds, grab that, write it down. Okay. The other thing is, and I've seen this happen, talk about your red flags. This one woman came in and she was like, I don't know what to do. This customer is back for the fourth time. Every single thing they've ever bought from me, they've opened a case and gotten their money back because they didn't like it. They've, ref they've not opened a case. I'm sorry. They've gotten a full refund and left me a shitty review. Sorry, I'm getting my stories mixed up because, my God, this shit's everywhere, right? It's like, wait a second. Why did this person come back the second time? Oh, well, you know, he wasn't happy the first time, and it's just good customer service. I just, I just wanted to, you know, I just owed it to him to try harder to please him. It's like somebody ordered a product from you, opened a case, and got a, I mean, asked for a refund and got a refund, and then she shared, then she shared some of the messages. This guy's like, this, this product sucks and there's no fucking way. He's swearing. He's, he's, he's literally swearing in text, taking the time. Okay, it's one thing that I pop off with an F shot. I don't put that shit in writing. It's like I have, I, I, I have enough control not to, not to put, well, maybe sometimes I don't. <laughs> sometimes I don't. It depends on who I'm talking. Okay, this guy, this guy was like, your product sucks. This product sucks. You suck. Blah, 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 blah. You're trying to rip me off. You're just a scammer. Blah, 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 blah. I want my money back. She refunded him. And then he did it again, got more free stuff because she refunded him in full and didn't even ask for her products back. He comes back and does it again and again. And now he's on, now he's on turn number four. Well, I don't want to get in trouble. 
You can cancel an order at any time for any reason and you don't need to offer an excuse. You just need to let them know that you've done it. Hey, just so you know, I canceled your order. It's like, oh no, then he'll make a complaint with Etsy. Then he'll, nope, he can call Etsy. He can call Etsy eight fucking hundred times and they are not going to take a complaint like that. As long as, if it's not, you know, as long as she doesn't say, oh, you're a dick and I don't, and I'm not doing business with you. Mm -mm -mm. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be generic. Be as generic as you possibly can. Do not give this person a reason to pin, because that's what they do. They do pull. It's like, well, oh yeah, I've been a dick, but, but they said, I don't want your business. That's discriminatory. That, then, and then Etsy's going to kiss his ass. It's like, nope, nope, nope. You just go, nope. Nope, sorry, can't fill your order. Done. You can blacklist people. You can blacklist people so that if they ever order for you, you can just immediately cancel the order and that's just the end of it. You can't, okay, you, you blacklist privately behind the scenes. There's no button to blacklist on Etsy, but you're allowed to do it. You're allowed to do it. You're allowed to go behind the scenes and go, I don't, if this person orders, I'm canceling it immediately. You can do it. You can absolutely do it. There's no reason why you can't do that. You just can't discriminate. And I don't mean, and, and refusing to do business with somebody who is a shitty customer, who is mean to you and gives you a rough time, that's not discrimination. That's self-preservation. I'm talking about you cannot discriminate based on race, um, religion, sexual orientation, gender, age. I think age is, I think age is a protected class. I forget. Anyway, you can't discriminate. Don't discriminate like that and you're fine. Anyway. Everybody's threshold of what is a red flag person varies. Okay. But if somebody is making you really concerned that they're going to be nothing but a problem for you, or they're just treating you like garbage and you don't appreciate it, you don't have to do business with them, period. Like I said, this woman, this guy was back four times. Well, what do I do? I mean, I really want to make sure that he likes it this time. I'm, I'm really getting, I'm, I'm really getting discouraged because nothing, I, nothing I'm doing is working and he's still unhappy. Recognize that that's a red flag. This guy recognized you as, oh, it's easy to get a refund from this person. So he's just going to keep trying just so he can get as much free stuff as he can before you finally decide you have to stop. Okay. But yeah, you like there have been there. I've seen, I've seen it plenty of times where somebody makes an order. Somebody makes an order. Okay. Let's, I, I okay. Let's say, okay. I, I sell pre-made bags. My bags are already pre-made. So if somebody orders a bag from me, and all I need to do is, they don't, they don't, like, I mean, I appreciate when people say, hey, Peggy, how you doing, blah, 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 I can't wait to get my bag, hey, that's great, I can't wait to give you my bag, blah, 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 right? But if some, but they don't need to, that, I mean, they, unless there's, unless they have questions, there's no reason, right? So, somebody orders a bag for me, and immediately sends a message, this better be blah, 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 or I'm going to open a case, and I'm going to give you a little review, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, I am not putting that fucking bag in the mail, I'm canceling the order. And I don't care if I'm down to my last $5. Because the last thing I want is to attract this kind of energy into what I do. I don't want this asshole to have five friends who are going to come and do the same fucking thing to me. Because that does happen. Does it happen a lot? No, probably not. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a huge problem. But it is something that happens. It is something that happens. If, because if I'm an asshole, all my friends are asshole. Hey, look at this bag I got. This is awesome, eh? You should go get a bag from her. And now, now you've, now you've got five assholes coming at you wanting to, wanting to treat you like crap. Okay. I've been very lucky. I don't have the, I do not have those kind of problems. My, my, my experiences with this is coming from previous jobs, um, previous environments. I mean, I worked at a Burger King for Christ's sake, years and years and years ago when the kids were little. So my, I do have experience with these people and I know what, I know what attracts them and I know what gets rid of them. Attracts them bending over backwards to give them whatever they want. Oh, I'm so sorry you feel that way here. Well, don't worry. I'll double check everything myself before I put it in the mail and make sure it is just perfect for you. It's like, that's, that attracts them. Don't make these people happy. Make them go away. Make them go away. And yes, it's going to cost you a little bit of money today to make them go away, but you will make more money in the long run and you will be happier and you're happier and your mental health will be much, much better for doing it that way. And I get it. I get it. When you're down to your last $20 and, and an order for a hundred bucks comes in, you're like, <gasps> money, I need the money. I get it. I get it. I get it. I've been, I've been broke folk. I get it. I, I get what the, I get what those small sales, I get what that can mean. I get what that can mean if you're in Etsy because you're struggling because you, because that side in, because it's the side gig income really means that much to you. I get it. Walk away anyway. Just walk away anyway, because that is the last thing you want. 
like I said, this girl with the teddy bears, the, her customer escalated and escalated and escalated. This was before the first stitch had even happened. She was already making threats. She was already being belligerent. She was already being angry. And then she's losing her fucking mind because where is my video? I expect you to video. I expect you to have a camera on while you're working so I can watch this, so I can watch my bear being born or whatever the fuck it was. I forget what it was. I don't think it was, I actually don't think it was teddy bears now. I don't remember. So I can watch it being born and it's like, cancel the fucking order. This is a level of drama and neediness. Do you really want this same person coming? You, you don't care if she's happy or not because you don't want her to come back. When this is, oh, when this is, when you have a customer that is mean to you, the last thing you fucking want is to ever have to deal with them again. And customer that gives you a one star review and they come back and order four more things. You don't fucking want that. You do not want these people coming back. Get the, get, get one, one star review. Learn your lesson from that person. And if they come back and I don't mean get rid of somebody just because they give you a low review, but some of these people are like, like, oh my God, it's crazy. It's like, I'm not, you know, I know I just placed my order, but I'm not going to accept it unless you've managed to give me some discount. So I need a partial refund. It's like, no, you don't. I hear I've canceled your whole fucking order. Those are red flag behaviors. Red flag behavior is any behavior that is just rude. Okay. Like I said, rudeness and being a little, being a little needy is like I said, relative. Like, I mean, I've got a lot and I don't think needy is quite the right word because there's needy in a toxic way. And then there's people that are just really curious really curious and would love to reach out and know a little bit more. That's fine. That's fine. And sometimes some, you know, I will always make time for that. And sometimes people do come across as a little needy, even though they don't mean to, and that's fine too. But red flag, everybody has their own idea of what a red flag buyer is. And when you encounter them, don't do business with them. It's that simple. And Etsy's system allows you to not have to do business with them and not have to give a shit one way or the other. But that's all I can really do is become a broken record on that. I really, that's, that's all I can do. Mo, like if you've, if you've, if the person's already got the stuff and they've come back and they are screaming at you and freaking out on you and whatever, that's already too late. The, 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 the business portion has already happened, but you can prevent them from coming back by just simply saying, Hey, not a problem. And I've, and, and I've, I've, I've seen people do it. Hey, not a problem. Here's your refund. And by the way, please don't order from my shop anymore. If you do order from my shop in the future, I will just, I will just be um, canceling and refunding immediately. And then they don't come back. Anyway, anyway, not a whole lot of, not, not a whole lot of definitive, definitive. Well, I guess there was a few definitive examples, but yeah, if somebody's threatening you before they've even, before you've even put their product in the mail, I don't care what your problem. Oh, well, I have a no cancellation policy, so they can't do anything about it. Huh? It's like they can open a case and they can give you a one-star review and they can also phone Etsy and make a formal complaint and they can also report you. There's a whole bunch of stuff that a buyer, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that a buyer can do if you piss them off enough. And if you create a situation where you're just attracting that to yourself on a regular basis, then you could end up with a big enough flood of it that it can cause you bigger problems than you expect. That's the worst case scenario. It doesn't happen as much as people think it does, but it is is a reason people stress. Don't give yourself a reason to stress by dealing with people who just don't deserve your business or deserve your products or whatever. Okay. So that's it. Um, yeah. If somebody is a red flag to you, don't, don't just don't. I mean, if somebody was acting like that in person, you would turn around and walk away. You can turn around and walk away on Etsy. And if somebody tips you off that they are a red flag customer, for if, if, if anything happens where you get the tip off that they are a red flag customer, just simply cancel the order and walk away. If they're already coming at you because, because it's already happened, because they've, they've already got their product and now they're trying to fuck with you, then yeah, call, call Etsy customer service. Hey, I've got this person that's threatening me. They're threatening a low review. If I don't give them a refund, what do I do? They'll help you, right? Um, you can say no. You can, you can say no. You can say, please don't purchase from me ever again. You can stand up for yourself. There's ways to do it. I'll probably discuss stuff, some of that stuff in future videos. I mean, I kind of I kind of attack each topic as I come to it. Again, Etsy, the Etsy handbook is probably 15,000 pages if you were to print it out. So there's a lot, there's a lot to cover. Most of it's common sense. Most, most of it's common sense and surprising, surprising. Anyway, that is it. Don't do business with the red flag buyers. And then your whole experience will be a whole lot better. 
You want to do business with people that are going to treat you with respect so that they are going to like, so that you're going to enjoy what you're doing, so that you're going to be happy to provide them with a stellar product, so that they're going to be happy with what they get. And they're going to tell their friends because my friends are like me. If I'm a dick, I'm going to tell other dicks and they're going to come and treat you like garbage. If I'm a decent person, I'm going to tell decent people who are going to come and give you a good experience. Get rid of the, get rid of the, get rid of the red flag people when you spot them. Do it through a great abundance of non-information. Sorry, I can't help you. I already went ahead and canceled your order, but I'm sure that you'll find another Etsy seller that can help you with meet your needs. Keep that in mind. Learn it. Chant it. And don't forget that we don't really encounter that stuff as often as it sounds like we do. Um, it's just that when we do, it is just, it just feels shitty when it happens. It just feels shitty when, when it happens. So just try and take a breath and don't forget to reach out to the social medias for help and ideas on how to deal with, 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 with any issues as you encounter them on a case by case basis, because I can talk to you about my experiences and how, and what I do, but that might not, I mean, if you do digitals, I'm probably can't help you because I don't do digitals. I don't have the same, I don't, I don't have the same toolkit, so I can't help the same way. Right. Don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to reach out to the, into the social medias and, and get help and ideas when needed. But uh, in the meantime, you guys have a great day. I'm going to get going. Uh, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do the, do the notification thing. I'm trying to take over the world. You guys know the drill. One subscription at a time. And in the meantime, I'll see you guys later. Bye.